it was wild. Um, I think going to Quebec City prepared me pretty well for anything that could have happened over there because I was comfortable going into kind of, you know, language barrier. Um, yeah, when I met you, you just... acted like you knew like fluent Russian. You spoke. I knew more than you, motherfucker. Like, we never would have got anywhere. Yeah. I had to talk to the. Fu- you remember when our driver just? You remember our driver just stopped you at the stop? He went. In, you would have weighed 130 pounds and never gotten a ride anywhere if you didn't have me. <laughs> when I stepped on the ice, I never backed down and I never stayed down. And I was vicious and I was malicious and I don't care. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed because Nuck said you're from like, like where you grew up is like poor. Did you not know that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't say it was poor. I said you better be on your fucking toes yeah. all the time if you're in Brockton. Yeah, right? I was. I mean, come I on. I was born in Bro- I was born in Brockton. I don't really. Re- I didn't spend any of my life there really. So I grew up in Plymouth and then Rockland. Also, not great great spots but no but uh, yeah L- listen plymouth's good my son lived on plymouth i love plymouth awesome um, yeah plymouth is plymouth was nice so you 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 brought up in brock and it's funny when i i go back and i remember back in the 80s um well obviously seeing the the uh, movie um about rocky marciano being from brockton and then uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? And I used to see. You know Hagler. who those are, those people are? Hey? I do. Yeah, my okay. grandfather had marvelous <laughs> autographed Hagler gloves in his hanging in his basement my whole life. Yeah, I I used to go down to P Town in the summers, right? You uh, did. In the off season, we'd go down on the weekends or whatever. I was down there one night having dinner with my wife, and I end up running to him and drinking with him all night. But he he used to run. He used to train at the Provincetown Inn, and he'd run the dunes in Truro all the time with army boots on. He'd get up in the... That guy was a freaking animal, uh, uh, Hagler. But animal. terrible, um, terrible. He died early, died young, right? Uh, marvelous, marvelous. Sounds like but, fucking uh, training camp, Henny, in Russia. Just running I, with I wish boots. I died during that training camp. <laughs> <laughs> so... So Russia, you too. Now, how, uh, how's this? How's this all happened, Josh? I, I, I look. You, you play with the bees there a little bit. Ottawa, up and down. And why did you decide to leave the NHL? And well, I was, I was a, lot, a lot more down than up. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just money, to be honest. I had kids young. Um, I went to Switzerland first, so I left Ottawa's organization. Um, I had the chance to resign. Probably could have got a decent two way, you know, somewhere else. But um, my wife at the time was pregnant with our second daughter. I was 25, hadn't really made any money. And I got, um, you know, the Swiss League is a great place to play if you're not going to be in the NHL. I think a lot of people would agree that's that's where you want to land. Um, and, you know, it was kind of the equivalent of like league minimum in the NHL, which at the time to me was a lot of money. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, I, I didn't want to give up, um, on the NHL at that point, but was that where, was that in Lugano life happens? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Lugano. Wait, where did you play with Vandem- Jim Vandermeer at? That was Lugano. Uh, Zurich. uh, excuse me, uh, Cloton. But that was like, I mean, I was a suitcase. We, we, that was so was I, that's why we're I'd like, you know, to two Russia suit- injured, <laughs> fired in Russia, then finished the season and, uh. I like caught on with Cloton at the end, right before the playoffs one year. So that was right before I played with you. So the last place before I played with you in Nizhny Kamsk was uh, uh, Cloton. But yeah, I mean, we just started started chasing money, trying to, you know, you work hard your whole life, kind of make, making sure I had had something to show for it. But um, that was that was honestly the main reason. Well, you know, I looked in in <clears throat> Milton Academy, right? You, who um, went to Milton Academy, which is awesome, yeah. right? And then I look in C- Quebec Ramparts, and I'm saying, I wish when I think back at, when I was a kid, I knew nothing about junior hockey. If I knew anything about junior hockey and I got up here, I'd have been a fucking first round pick. Yeah. I was picked <laughs> in the 17th round. I really, I would have. I'm like, gee, you know, I knew nothing about it. But you were, what, how'd you 
make your way to 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 Quebec. Yeah. And and with my former teammate Patrick, by the way. And I'm gonna ask you about him too. I wanna hear how fucking nuts he was. <laughs> An honest if he assessment. was nuts. <laughs> um, um so I was at Milton um my my freshman year. I had a really good year. I played two years. Um two years in the varsity team. I think my last year, um, I had really good line mates that were upperclassmen. I think I finished um, third or fifth in the ISL in scoring. Um, you know, I, and I still could have played there for another three years. So I grew early. So I was kind of a man child at that point. Um, you know, agents, scouts, we were calling my parents and stuff. Um, so I was kind of on the map in terms of being a pro prospect. Um, and it was just something different. Um, my parents were supportive. I mean, I, I got, you know, I was getting recruited by pretty much every team in the, in the, in the Quebec league. And as, as people probably assume, I don't know if it's still, uh, you know, if we're not supposed to talk about it, but, um, we got, you know, I, I got paid as a 16 year old to play. Oh, you know? so I, yeah, I was making, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I was making a, I was making Let's a, get Patrick yeah. in trouble. <laughs> Look, he, got, he got a ton of dope. He's got a fucking ton of dough. We can he can take a fun. Maybe, right? uh, maybe my dad was getting paid as a scout, and then he was forgetting it under my bed or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever they wanted to call it, I was getting paid. Um, so, but they they actually um, we you know I had been to Quebec City I guess for the PB tournament, and then I was actually getting heavily recruited by Halifax, um, and I thought I was going to Halifax, and I had flown out and seen a game, and I just finished my prep school season fly out to Halifax and see a game at the Metro center. And I think they played Val d'Or and there were like 8,000 people there and there were, you know, luxury boxes and the kids assigned autographs and, yeah. you know, that the idea that I would be able to do that, you know, essentially like, you know, three or four months from that, from that point in time or go back and be a sophomore at Milton was, it was exciting. Um, and then you know, I was a decent student. Uh, I wasn't necessarily, you know, I, I, Milton was amazing and great for me. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't think I necessarily, um, you know, needed to stay there. And, and I wasn't overly concerned with not being able to get an education and not being able to get into college at some point if, if I had, you know, if I had to. So that's um, changed and, now, though, right? Like at Division One athletes can get paid and stuff or they can. Did you know that or no? Am I the only one? Am I making this up? No, I mean, I think the football no. player, you can get paid for your you likeness can, now. Yeah, you could do, like, yeah. you could sponsor brand. So, like, could you have, is that, I? someone asked me that the other day. Is that I real? mean, I wasn't like, LeBron. I was no, just... <laughs> no, I know, but could you have gone from, like, that league now? Could you get a college, like, could you go to college now, even though you're getting paid? Oh, would you lose your eligibility? Yeah, is that, like, no, I, I don't I, even I, know. I believe that is still, that is still, I mean, it's ridiculous. They call, uh, I understand why they do it. They're trying to protect the quality of, of the Canadian Hockey League. Um, but I think... Aside from any other arrangements, as a 16-year-old in that league, I would have been making $35 a week Canadian, which Fucking crazy. is like, and that, that's considered Child professional. Child labor laws. Yeah, that's Terrible. considered professional by the NCAA. Um, I mean, we were getting more than that as stipends for like the under-17 team. We were playing a tournament in Slovakia. I remember we were getting off a bus doing like a tourist day in some town in Slovakia, and they handed us like cash. And I'm like, well, what's, well, what the fuck's the difference between this and, you know, but all those kids can go play in college. Uh, so you live with a host family, you know, the 16 year old, it was 35 bucks a week. Um, and, you know, I guess according to the NCAA or according to, you know, the arrangement between. So, the so here's the deal. So you go to Quebec, so yeah. you're there and Quebec city. Now you're fourth year there, right? You were there four years, yeah. right? How old are you? You're fourth year, 18, uh, 19. 19. So, geez, 18 and 19. You're there two years, 18 and 19. What I want to know now, you weren't married yet. No. How <laughs> was the Dago Bear? Was the Dago Bear, I mean, come on. Is right. that like the fucking best right place to the in the meat world? And potatoes. It is the best. What is it? Uh, I got in a, I mean, I, I got in a little got in a little trouble. I think it became known. I think Patrick found out that I like to hang out with the Dago Bear. Yeah. Um, probably, I mean, we all did. It was a blast. The problem, it's a, it's a club. Tim downtown, which I assume is still there. The place like a membership? Heavy. Yeah, it's still there. No, it's, it's like a nightclub. A... <laughs> it's, like, it's like three or four three stories floors. high. Yeah. Like just oh, incredible okay. looking bartenders. Just... There's no drinking age, essentially. <laughs> I mean, they say it's 18, but if you play for the hockey team, yeah. um, 
you know, our whole team would go there after games. And then the problem is it doesn't close till four o'clock in the morning, 18 years old. And that's not where you should be at that time. But, <laughs> um, but listen, that, I mean, four years of that, like when I think four, four years in Quebec city, I mean, you're lucky you're still alive. I mean, I <laughs> honestly, and when you're there playing junior and again, the, the, the you guys have media, right? It was like, it was oh, almost yeah. like, yeah, a, we were it's like I mean, a pro team. It was, it's like com- it was completely a pro team. I mean, there's, you know, no professional team. You know how passionate Quebec City fans are. Ah, you know, the, young, the younger generation, I would say my age and younger are probably Habs fans, but, you know, everybody else has nostalgia over the Nordiques. So, um, and you speak French, don't you? No, my... don't you yep. speak? Yeah, I do. Um, so you, you took it in school then when you're there. See, I got here, I was 21 yeah. and, I like I still can't fuck I can speak a little but yeah. it's like I find it so difficult with you know the um you know uh, masculine feminine yeah, all the verb fucking, tenses. Oh, the verb it's like fucking crazy it was crazy. well I had a girlfriend that um, oh that I, helps I had taken it in school before I like I'd taken it at Milton Academy excuse me yeah and um you know I think for three years and like anybody else takes span, you know, it's not, you don't really think it's sinking in, but what was unique about it, but I actually moved somewhere and got immersed in it quickly. Um, a couple of things happened. My, my rookie year as a 16 year old, basically all the other English native English speaking kids got traded away at Christmas. And all of a sudden nobody spoke English in the locker room, oh, you know, yeah. more of the coaching was in French. Um, another thing was that, you know, in the province of Quebec at the time, I don't know if it's still the case, to, to graduate high school, you had to pass the provincial French exams. So I was staying after school a couple of days a week take, with a tutor. And then that all really sank in when I met a girl walking up the stairs, not the Dagobert, a different club, the Palladium, um, that yeah. didn't, didn't speak a word of English. And about three weeks later, I was fluent. There you go. That'll <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah. That'll do it. Where's she at? So... <laughs> um, I assume she, she's she's still up there. <laughs> I met Emily Wright, my my uh, ex and mother of my children, shortly after that. She's from Quebec, also. Oh, okay. She speaks English, so, though. Not not as exciting. So I, you know, it's funny. Everybody wants to talk about Russia. I want to talk about fucking Quebec City, yeah. but I do want to talk about Russia. And so Logano, uh, and, and and you go to Russia. What what's it like when you get to Russia? I've been there a couple times, and I had fucking culture shock my first time. I got off the plane. I was like, Ugh. I fucking hated it at the beginning. It was exciting. I mean, it was wild. Um, I think going to Quebec City prepared me pretty well for anything that could have happened over there because I was comfortable going into kind of you know language barrier. Um, yeah, when I met you, you, you acted like you knew like fluent Russian. You spoke. I knew more than you, motherfucker. Wait, we never would have got anywhere. I had to talk to the fuck. You remember when our driver just? You remember our driver just stopped you at the stop? He went. And you would have weighed 130 pounds and never gotten a ride anywhere if you didn't have me. <laughs> but, oh man, yeah. It I was, was like you though, Nux. I was kind of just like, what the fuck is going on? I did, I don't. I, maybe I did hate it too, but. It, Eventually, I had to live there, so I don't know. No, you, were you excited was, to go? What was the first year you went to Vitez? I know you told that story. Yeah, it was it was Vitez. I mean, I was I was excited to have a job. I mean, I went all summer with like I had played mostly for the you know the, I was I played a little bit up with Boston, but I was with the Bruins and I was in Providence. Um, and I think the only other the only other contract I had on the table, um you know, North America was like kind of a, like a modest two way, like not a great American league salary with, um, Dallas, I think. And, um, they, you know, I, I, I signed a contract with, yeah. And they offer you like, they offer you like, I was excited enough. Yeah. Cause <laughs> um, you're, they offer you too. Like, it's kind of like you put it to, in perspective. It, it's like three years of like North, America, you know, for guys like us, like, I just felt like, yeah. We, you know, yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I, I, it's hard at that point. I, so Vitez, Vitez, right? Yeah, How far yeah. is that from uh, Moscow? Uh, it's like, like Moscow Oblast, so like Moscow region. So it's probably yeah. an hour, maybe like, I think it's like 40 miles, but Moscow traffic is it's fucking insane. You need a helicopter. To so get Boston or Worcester or something like that? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exa- yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I, right. probably like Worcester, yeah. To, right. to, 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 um, to Vitez? 
well, like VTS, where in like Chekhov was the town. So to downtown Moscow it's was a dump. What, 40 miles or something. Yeah, but so when you guys are talking money, yeah, like VTS. So, so say Knuckles, they're going to offer me a fucking contract. What kind of off money they offer me? Uh, I think I started with, I mean, I think. I think they assume to get like any decent North American player. I mean, I think you were making like at least 400,000 US is probably where they started. And I was like, my resume wasn't like Tim's. Um, he had more NHL games. So I think he was making a lot more than that when he started. But I somehow got him up to like 600,000 before I got on the plane. <laughs> and I didn't even know if these people had any fucking clue who I was. Um, yeah. And then you get there. I mean, for me, so. You went to Kazan first, right? Stay. I went to Minsk, and yeah, you get there, and oh, it's, right. they that's act right. like they never. Heard, that's like weird. Go ahead, because I'll feed off of you. But go ahead, what you're I saying. Was, well, I just I got there, and the team was on the road, and so the you know the guy they give me a ride to the rink to drop my stuff off, and I don't know the locker room was like it looked like a you know like a PB locker room with the municipal rink, like there's like shit on the floor and like. There's no real, like, there's like a tiny little changing area. And there were guys in the, there were really good players on the team. I mean, Danny Markov, you know, played in Detroit and Toronto. Um, Andre, it was a lockout year. So Andre Markov ended up playing with us for half the season. Alexander Korolyuk, like guys that have that played in the NHL and have been, you know, national team players in Russia. And I just remember thinking, like, this is where these guys, like, come every morning? Like, to, yeah, to, you know, to play. It was just it was just very modest. The rink was tiny. It held like thirty five hundred people, um, and it's just hard to believe that they're able to pay you that much money. So it's like mind boggling. The economics of it just don't work. So you realize it's like a fantasy league for rich, rich so. Russian, yeah, Russian dudes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like I, yeah, like they would. Be, no... Like I'd get yelled at for like missing an open that because like I didn't cover the over in the game or something. <laughs> you know, like it was crazy. It was uh. I, but when I got when I first got there too, that was I don't know. I I guess I kind of was you know Minsk was one of the you know one of the teams. I don't know if you know Nux, but it's there's like I don't know how many teams now are outside of Russia that are in the KHL, but yeah. maybe not anymore after what's going on. But um, you know those teams had an unlimited kind of, or at least they had way more of a room to get in. Like you could get up to like ten imports on those teams, but when you get in Russia, you're only allowed. Four. Five, I think. Five. Yeah, four or five. And yeah, going back like to what you – and so in Minsk, we had like – it was like an AHL team, you know? And then, and then uh, you know, I so – Yeah, half from, the team was North America. Yeah, or, but, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we had – you know, I, I, I could never have gone – I remember first game, I first time I played in VTS, I was, was like, I don't even know how – you knew nothing about it because, I mean, otherwise you have thick skin. I mean, I could never have signed there as my first – Well, I knew they were known as like complete goon squad. But there was the only place in the world that offered me six hundred grand, so I didn't care. I knew they <laughs> so when you say goon squad, though, goon squad, like guys fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nux. This was the yeah. team yeah. that, like, oh, they were, it was Chris, uh, si Chris Simon went to Reed Simpson. They signed all the fight. Oh, okay, you know. So when I was there. We had Trevor Gillies and Jeremy Oblonsky. Um, uh, Darcy Vero had played there and was just like a complete sideshow. Um, like Chris Simon was there, who actually could could. I don't know. Those guys actually did pretty well, but they were, they were doing shit that was like more crazy than like the NHL, like in its heyday of toughness. Like the problem is, is nobody was engaging it. It was like a one way street. There were teams forfeiting. You like could they, didn't, see, they yeah, were just going to, they, they didn't, didn't want to come yeah. to VTS. No, they, like, we, they just didn't. Growing men would be like skating away. Like in these. Oh yeah. Full like, sprints. Like, wait, wait, like <laughs> jumping, like diving yeah, over like, the bench. Like <laughs> just fucking just. Head first into yeah. the bench. Like, I'm not fighting this guy. It's like, holy fuck. Yeah. So would, would these guys, be, these North American guys, the tough guys that come yeah. over from over here, would yeah. they be going after fucking Russians? Or, yeah. Mostly or Russians. Just, yeah. But they well, also... That's what they expected to do. It was understood that that's what the management ownership of that team expected them to do. They didn't give a shit about hockey. They were going to put on a show. And the league got fed up with it, was my understanding. So the year that I signed there... Alex Jamnov, played for the Hawks, unbelievable hockey player, was the GM. And I, he, I think he was kind of brought in to like clean it up a little bit and put a competitive team on the ice. And, and we were, we had, I mean, we had a bunch of, a bunch of good players, but we, it, we still had that. The residual. We still had two, tough guy. two heavies from North America <laughs> yeah. that like, 
There's really it's a complete cycle. There was nobody to. There was nobody for them to fight. No, like I felt so badly for when they finally get somebody to bite, and they would just who'd they fight? Like who was like? Give me well, a... John Morasti was playing like a couple of teams. They made like had, a like, documentary somebody... out of that. Them two just having that one fight. Is that when? Uh, yeah, Morasti yeah, was out with you guys or no? No, 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 no. But he was the only guy in the league like that would like fight him of his own free will. Like the other guys, it was like they were just like chasing people around and. Um, it was kind of, it was, it was silly, but they knew that's what they were there for. So I, I'm sure those guys didn't feel great about it. They'd rather have somebody that was you know, kind of up to the task, but at the same time, nobody else was offering that kind of money. So it, were they, they getting paid they, like they per a fight? Do. No, I think they were making like, I don't know, two fifty, three hundred thousand. They were, they dressed in 10 or 15 games each, played three <laughs> shifts each. Chase uh, people you know, around. I, yeah, it was. Nux, if you 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 get a chance after this, look look up the Nazarov, because Nazarov was the coach at one point, wasn't he? Wasn't that BTS? Yeah, Nazarov. And he fucking goes in the stands, and he's trying to beat fans with a stick. It's nuts. Uh, I'll check it out. Now, look, so the tough guys there and all that, what um, what the fuck was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Like, you get over there, and, and so... Are you worried about getting paid? And then what, what are the living arrangements like, you know, in Russia? <laughs> so my <laughs> first year, uh, we were, um, um, Mark Cullen um, was a good player. Uh, Matt Cullen's brother. Mark played a little bit in the NHL also, but um, had never been over there. Like, just like this kind, awesome kid from the Midwest that like never, I don't, think was as prepared for how crazy he was going to be as I was like I didn't give a shit like they just gave us a car to share the first day we showed up and I'm like he's like I'm not driving around here like (laughs) take the fucking keys so I'm like you know I I don't I didn't care so I like pull out in traffic I'm like I will figure it out and um because people are like driving on the side of the road like you can you can there's no like like, lanes people are just fucking I seen a guy pissing out his own window while he's driving it's fun it's (laughs) no it's a free for all (laughs) and if you if you're if you try to be polite and wait for somebody to go you'll just sit there all day (laughs) yeah yeah. like being being from Massachusetts oh I think I was a little better equipped to handle that part of it than being from Minnesota (laughs) but uh, um uh and even the all of it, really, it's just the way, just how crazy it all is. We so we we were looking for an apartment together, and then I think about a month we couldn't really find anything. That it was expensive too; it was crazy. And we were staying at a hotel that was owned by you know one of the you know the owner of the team, basically the gangsters. Yeah, one, yeah, one of the gangsters. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there were times when I was the only guest of the hotel, full <laughs> staff. I'd come down to breakfast. There's like two Russian chicks like run out of a corner somewhere, and like. You know, I say that I learned how to say eggs. So I said the exact same fucking three words every day and got the same toast with eggs and butter uh, every day. And it was like a, I mean, you know, it looked like a motel room. Um, I just lived there all day. I didn't really give a shit because I wasn't, I mean, I couldn't believe that you asked about worried about being getting paid. You only get paid once a month. And I was worried because I was, I'd been there for a month and hadn't gotten paid. And um, you know, the hockey at that point is just going okay. I'm like, if I get fired right now, I will have done this for nothing. Um, and then I had a little cell phone that I bought at like a mall kiosk, like one of the little, like, like a tiny Nokia. It was like 30 bucks, like analog. And, you know, I got a text message from the bank one morning that like, it's like you get paid in rubles. So yeah. It's, so it's many like 70 zeros. million rubles. Yeah. It was like <laughs> yeah. six. The numbers get cut off on the text. Like, yeah, fucking... you can't see it on that little screen. <laughs> so you get excited for yeah, a second. So I'm like, I don't even know what that means. But I'm, it's got to be a couple bucks. Right? Like 500 hours. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and I remember the first one, it was like 60 grand. Well, the first month there. And I was like, wow. Like, this I could do how... another month. I could do one yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you make it to the end of the month. You know, you... Mm-hmm. my wife's like, what the fuck are you doing over there? And I was like, the kid, you know, the family didn't come with me at that point. So I was, I was really, I was doing it for the money. I had kids and I was worried about money. So, um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I was worried about getting paid at the beginning and then I got paid. I mean, it got a little dicey. I got hurt and fired and I was getting paid by like three different teams in Russia at one point, but, um, it's, uh, you, you, finished make, a full you have year? to fight. I think it helped that I had a Russian agent that like just knew how they worked. Did and, you like, play the full year there? 
Yeah, no, my first year went well. I signed a two year extension with Vitas. With the so, same what team. happened after that? Like, did you guys have to stick I, around after when you lost? We had this, in Minsk, I was like fucking calling USA Hockey to get me like released. You know, I was like a fucking release me. Oh, oh they were, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. So, do you remember the, the Nadizhda Cup? It was the first year they did it. It was like, oh, the, oh, it was yeah. Like oh, fucking the Hope, the Hope Cup. The Hope Cup. Yeah. Nux, like they, hope, Nux, they just basically, the, the, it was like a week before the season ended. It was like the, they were taking a sauna or something, and they were just like, yeah, hey, fucking let's make all the losers a play a tournament. That that's didn't what make they the playoffs. <laughs> so they made yeah. it. So like, it's like they called it the Hope Cup. Anyways, go yeah. ahead. I know. I haven't been home in like seven months, and I'm like, all right, we're not making the playoffs. I was like, I'm going directly to the fucking airport when this game ends. And that's like, yeah, it's like they, and they're like, oh, no, you didn't hear about the, the Hope Cup? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is that? The Hope mean? Cup, yeah. So it's like a full, you play full series against yeah. other losing teams that <laughs> yeah, make no, the playoffs. Oh. Like, and it's Survivor, though. It's yeah. not like. Like if you win, or no, what is it? Yeah, it, no, if you lose, you go home. So it's the same thing, but it's like you. Guys were trying remember, to lose. I remember. Yeah, like, well, we played. I got a breakaway. This is so fucked up. And I'm not, I will not say that I did, that I missed it on purpose. It's 0 0 in a game to move on from the first round. <laughs> like everyone's trying to go home. I nuts. swear to God, third period, 0 0. I have like the most like outrageous breakaway. It was like a penalty shot. Like everybody on the ice fell down. I had the puck <laughs> from the red line. And I'm panicked in my heart. Like I'm going to score. Like the goalie looked like like he the goalie wanted to lose more than I did. It was like a North American goalie. <laughs> so I'm like, I was like, my only yeah, chance of not fuck. scoring. He's like oh, standing this. on the side of the net. Just like, I was Whoa. like, I gotta put this out of the rink over the glass if I want to not score right now. <laughs> and uh, no, but you know you're competitive. You're playing the game. So I didn't actually. I, I don't. The way I recall it is, I had this. The only time it's ever happened in my life, I had this fear between the hash marks that I was going to score, which is the most fucked up feeling, and that I'd have to play a whole nother series. <laughs> Of this like meaningless fucking tournament, dude. You know, and you've been a lot because they would so threaten. Long. Like the coaches would be like, they would like threaten. You know, we're not going to pay you if you don't try. Yeah, no, but you like pay, you everyone went out there and like kind of tried. At least the North American. Yeah. I remember we were in an overtime to move on, and like the uh, we ended up winning. But the goalie, I forgot, it might have been Jeff Glass, maybe, was just screaming. He was the goalie. Like we're hemmed in. Like we got the and he's five hole, five hole. He's like telling us where to shoot. Because he, that's, you know, both, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, I remember taking draws against the center on Spartak. I forget his name. And we were always matched up against each other. And it was like, it was like men's league. Like nobody <laughs> was, it's like we were trying to not fuck up each other's tape job. Yeah. Like we were, <laughs> we were just like barely, it's like, no, you take it. You take it. But oh, it, it was, nuts. it was strange. So then I, so we lose, I go home and, uh. I had been, I was playing for the province Bruins the year prior. We were, had moved to Rhode Island, liked it. So my, my wife and kids were in, in uh, Providence area. And, you know, I'd been home for like a week. So there's like, okay, you know, you're on vacation or whatever. So I, I re-signed a two-year deal. So I was like, all right, guys, see you in August. And flew home the next morning. And um, I get a call from my agent a week later, like, where are you? And I'm like, my fucking bed. He's like, where? I was like, Rhode Island. Why? Like, what do you mean? He's like, we have practice. I'm like, what? <laughs> like right now. Like the coach called my agent, at, wondering where I'm from Moscow. Can you get here like, in an hour? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what do you, I'm like, what do you mean we have practice? So he's like, I was like, man, I, I, I can't come back. I was. He's like, well, you, they still owe you. You know, you still, you'd have to forfeit the last six weeks of your pay, which that you know that math that was like eighty grand they still owed me. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So I hung up. It was the morning. I like looked at my wife. I was like, I wanted to throw up. I was like, I guess I can. Yeah, because Nux, I think I mentioned that. Like the contracts go to yeah. April 30th. Yeah. So all yeah, this God. shit's I mean, happening in February. Together. Season's over. We think like hey, he goes home and it's like, hey, you still got like 27 more days on your contract. Yeah. yeah they just make you like, it's like want to get something out of you. So you have to show up and, 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 and you, you know, just practice. You just practice. And it's basically to make you suffer until like the, the finals are over. So essentially, it's like they want you to stay and work out as long as the KHL season lasts. So I remember the finals being on TV. And finally, they like had mercy and let me go like three days early or something. Because I, so the crazy. So, so you I, went back over. Did so you go I, back I got over? on a plane. Yeah. I got on a plane the next day. So I missed two practices. So they're, they're like pissed at me when I get back there. So I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm here. Like, what are we doing? You're going to blow my mind with like training camp. So we fucking get on the ice. There's no dry land. We get on the ice 
warm the goalies up and drop our sticks in the middle. Like when you're a kid, like when you're playing shinny and you're like, the guy closes his eyes and he's throwing sticks to one end, like to split up teams. <laughs> so we put like pennies on and play shinny for an hour, Monday through Friday, <laughs> shinny 10 to 11. That was it. So from Friday at 11 to Monday morning at 10, you're off, but it's not enough time to go home. It was ridiculous. It was, it was ridiculous. Um, so it was funny. So I, that's actually what I became buddies with some of the Russian kids. We would like fly to Latvia. So like Friday at 11, we'd like go to the airport and like go to fucking Riga for the weekend and like get all banged up and not go to bed and show back up on Monday. Um, and it was just for shinny. Yeah. And there was no like, like everyone's laughing. And I remember the, like the second day back, I got like, like opened up like eight eight stitches under my eye and like shinny and i'm like I'm glad i came back this is, this is awesome there's this is nothing i could nothing better like i wanted to say like do you realize how much harder i'd be working if you let me go home yeah <laughs> like you know what i mean like the way we're used to training in the off season it's oh like, man it's so backwards it was it's strange but um you can't you can't convince them that you know you'll never talk them out of it so. in minsk we didn't even pre- like they yeah. just shut everything down but they just made us come in and like say hello take take a sauna yeah they just wanted like it was like yeah. they fucking checked you off on a list to make sure yeah, you know t- taking attendance attendance yeah and then i had to do that for like 20 days and they didn't pay us they stopped paying us in like january and then all of a sudden in may i just got everything in the middle of world championships but i got it but it was Strange. yeah I, I was i always got paid man that was the one thing i never really i think um you know the, the next year i went back so it was the first year of a two-year deal and i broke my ankle early in the season and then it got ugly and they they were like just treating me like complete shit like basically trying to get me to quit so you guys played together in that other place with all the uh um letters <laughs> 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 yeah. Nefti- whatever the Nefti- <laughs> camps yeah that so you both played there was keenan there too no Did you play for keenan no the, no no the no, keenan was no. so i ended up Holy fuck, where do we start with this, Henny? I ended up where when I, I got traded that year, Nux, so did Henny got fired. Remember how Again. they fired you too? Like it I was get like fired all the time. <laughs> that was like the third time. I went over the... Now when you get fired, they just don't pay you. You're done. No, so you're so that's they the buy you out, right? You don't have a no, you get a, you have a leg to that's stand on? Yeah, well, they, you, there's, so your contract says they have to buy you out. Now your contract's written in Russian. It looks like it's fucking handwritten backwards in Chinese, but it's it says that I think it was they owe you fifty percent of fifty percent of what was remaining. So if you got bought out halfway through the year and they owed you three hundred grand, that I have to give you one hundred fifty plus twenty five percent of any any the value of the rest of the contract. So the first time I got fired, I had like another year left. So they actually had to continue paying me a little bit the, the following year, which they did, which was kind of surprising. I mean, I had to chase it. My agent had to like you know go knock on the door to get it, but. Um, I got it, but getting fired was like the first, I learned the first time they were kind of like, they try to make you uncomfortable. So like you come back to the rink and like, you don't have a stall one day and it's not like, it's not like respectful, like, Hey, tough part of the business. Sorry. Like, no, it's like, no one will look at you. Yeah. It's like you don't exist. Yeah. And then they tried to take, I remember they, they, they like tried to take my, like I had a pair of skates I had just gotten that was only like a week old and they wanted the guy, the equipment manager's like in my fucking locker like, trying to take the <laughs> skates back. And I'm like, you guys owe me like 300 grand. You worried about the skates? And uh, so the second time stage, when I got fired in Disney camps, I knew that was coming. So yeah, I it's when you before, took all the skates to the before home. Before they fired me, I t- I swapped the new skates. He's at the, he's at our apartment with all these skates now because he's like, I'm getting yeah, fired. So I put all the <laughs> I put all the old skates back in my stall and fucking snuck out, snuck out. But they the... ca- they called about them, right? They're, didn't yeah. they like try to get them back? Yeah, they called. My agent was calling me. I remember we were out the night before. If you remember this, remember that like club? We were out the we night were, like the, we were smashed. Not the night two hundred nights before. Yeah, and um, so I wake it was a day off. I woke up hungover. My agent calls me and. We knew at this point because remember Matt Anderson? So they had already hired another import that came in and was like sitting in my stall. <laughs> yeah, and he was like my old teammate too, Nux. He yeah. was like, yeah. 
Yeah, we're like, all just like bullshit. I was like, just like the fake friend. Like, see you, well, Josh. Hey, Matt, the... what's up? It was fucking yeah, he's, weird, dude. It was weird. He's standing in the middle of the room with his bag on his shoulder. I like won't get up. I'm like, I'm not getting up until they <laughs> agree to pay me my, my buyout. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're going to have to. I think me. I would have got that. I would have been poisoned over there because yeah. I would have fucking cracked someone. Yeah, you probably. Yeah, uh, yeah you probably would have. <laughs> For sure. Is Medvedev, is he the head of the league, the guy from Gazprom, Medvedev? Yeah. He's the I guy think, who started the league, right? Yeah, I think he's um, I think he's the most powerful person associated with the league, essentially. I mean, yeah. Gazprom, I think, was propping up like five yeah. or six teams in the league. Um, yeah, yeah. But yes, I think he's very, I don't know what his title is now, but yeah, he was. Yeah, he was I met him over here him. at a game, and then I met him in Russia. We played in, in Red Square. We played against the... Um, Fabulous Five, a group of NHL oh, really? all stars. Yeah, it was oh, awesome. We okay. played in Red Square. It was all, yeah. I, I had a blast. Red, Scotty yeah, Bowman was coaching. Awesome. And, Downtown yeah, Moscow it was, it was pretty, really cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So, so you're playing over there, the bigger rank, all that, whatever. La di da. Living arrangements, okay. How about the travel? Will you guys ever? Do you ever get tight ass over there when you think of what happened with Brad McCrimmon in Locomotive when the plane went down in 2011? You know, did you yeah. ever? Yeah, the first you flight. Know, so that my first year in Russia was. I've the been first, scared shit. The yeah. one time, you know, Henny, you remember when the guy like fucking missed the runway? Yeah, and he, he like tried flew back twice. up. He, could, he like we he came was... down next, and we're like all of a sudden the fucking plane starts like taking an angle. Like we're like just about to land. And then, like, me and him are, like, white-knuckled, like, fucking crying. And the Russians are just playing cards. Like, nothing's going on. And then they said something on the intercom. And he was like, oh, he almost missed runway or something. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, he did. He couldn't see. So he pulled back up. He was, like, 10 feet off the ground and couldn't see the ground. So he pulled pulled back up into the sky. And we, like, looped around. We had to go to some other airport for him to try again. Uh, but, yeah, I was, I mean, you thought about it. Obviously, you knew that happened, right? Um, I remember we visited the first time we played against locomotive, we visited the memorial for, for that, you know, for those guys, um, as a team. And that's obviously, I mean, that's one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. Um, and that whole year, I think they, I don't know if they still do it, but there was a moment of silence before every game. And, uh, I remember that being like just a really eerie feeling. Um, but we honestly had, even with Vitez, we had a nice plane, like, you know, it was a Boeing something like you'd be something you'd expect over here the, uh, yeah it wasn't, yeah our it wasn't, plane was yeah. go ahead we had a nice we had a nice plane i remember one time it wasn't available or something and um it was like the middle of the night and we we were like walking out onto the tarmac you know it's rush it's freezing i look out it's not the same plane and like the stairs come down out of like the asshole of the plane it's like some old looking russian plane and i was like oh fuck here we go and you get on it like smells like cigarettes and it's like old ripped leather seats and stuff oh yeah but um, that was, you know, it was one flight I remember that the plane is something that, like, never would have been allowed to fly over here. But um, honestly, otherwise, it was pretty good. I mean, we stayed in the nicest hotel in every city we went to. Um, they had money. It was not, it was just, some cities just, what their nicest hotel is, is not, not much. Um, but, I mean, we were staying in five-star hotels in, in downtown Moscow. I mean, St. Petersburg. Um, you know, all the nice cities that had nice hotels, we had nice accommodations, the meals, I mean, we're always well fed. Um, honestly, that was, that was not the issue. The, the things that were, um, you know, I guess memorable that were negative were just kind of how, how you get treated if things aren't ideal. Was, I guess, like when less... you broke your ankle, do you feel like that was kind of fucked up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they tried so you break your ankle. What what's it like? You go to the hospital, get you get casted up, and then how, yeah. how do you get treated? What? That's a decent story. I um, so I I got hit with a shot, um, you know, at one point. So this is early in my second season. So I just signed a two year deal. Um, like I was on the front end of the power play, got hit in the ankle, went to like it was at home. So we went to this like old hospital, like X ray machine from you know, 1960, they had me like standing up on the table. It was bizarre. Like, so they could get the right angle of my ankle, I'm, like balancing on one leg. So the x-ray is negative. Um, like I take a week off, then they start pressuring you. They're like, your leg's not broken. What's wrong? Like call me a pussy basically. And it's like twice the size of the other one. I can barely walk. I'm like, fuck, but you, you always have that feeling. They won't pay you if you don't listen to them. Right. And you're there for the money. So it's like, there's just no real recourse. It's like, they, you know, you're just like a, you know, they're, it's like they're whipping a horse basically. But, um, 
so finally this so the coach comes up to me after practice one day we lost a couple games and i was out of the lineup and um you know he comes up to me in broken english he never spoke to me otherwise and he says he's, he's, he's coming out of the sauna he's got his towel around me he's like i say you play we were playing against kazan i think it was against you i think so and he's like i say you he's like he's like no no doctor say i say you play and i'm like all right whatever so so we go to, we go to Kazan. I'm in warm ups. I'm just warm up. I can't even skate in a circle in warm ups. I'm like standing in front of the net with like drop the bucket of pucks and just like you know throwing muffins at the goalie. I come off the ice and I'm like, this is too painful. Like I said, so they gave me morph. I got shot up with morphine. But yeah, needle in my ass of morphine before a hockey game, like a early regular season game in fucking Kazan. And you know, at that point, you question like, all right, what the fuck am I doing here? Um, so my like second shift of the game, I stopped, tried to change directions, felt it pop. So it, like it snapped at that point, it had been cracked and it snapped. And uh, I go to the, so then I'm, you know, whatever, then it's obviously broken. I'm in like a friggin' ambulance going to the hospital in Kazan, which is a better place for that to happen, like a more modern city. And uh, so my agent gets me on a plane back to Moscow because I don't want to, I don't want the team to deal with this anymore. Like, and um he takes my agent gets me into like what was essentially a Russian military hospital, which obviously thinking about that now with everything going on, it's, it's pretty wild to think that I was on an operating table in a Russian military hospital. But, um, you know, the doctor, we, we meet with the doctor, he doesn't speak English. He says, um, you know, I understand through the interpreter. He says, I understand if you don't, if you're not comfortable having this done here, but, um, you know, you should get it done quickly before it starts to heal because you need, you need surgery. You need a screw and pins put in. So I had a similar situation. I got hurt overseas before and kind of ended up having to pay out of pocket some money. So I was worried about that. So I asked how much it would cost the surgery and if the team would pay for it, if I would go somewhere else. So my agent says, how much would it cost in the U S I said, I don't know, call it 30 grand. I said, how much would it be here? So the guy starts like adding up. He's like going through his book, like flipping things. I'm like, okay, it's going to be something significant. Right. He's like uh, 16,000 rubles, it's like which $2. was like 480 bucks <laughs> at, the, at the time. <laughs> like that, like they're at speed. Yeah. Fucking muffle yeah. That something. includes, it was like a fast food surgery <laughs> that included like your overnight stay. Um, and I'm like, Oh fuck. So the team's obviously not going to agree to pay for anything. So I'm going to do it out of pocket. And like the guy had like, you know, like pictures on his wall of like Russian Olympians he had operated on. So I'm like, fuck it. So I just rolled the dice. Now it's like the middle of the night at home. So I didn't tell my wife I need surgery. I didn't tell my parents. Like I got, I got no advice whatsoever. I was just like, fuck it. I don't want to pay 30 grand out of pocket for this. So I'll let this guy do it. And, um, you know, he ended up, it was fine. So he, so he says, I said, you know, when can you fit me in thinking like we'll schedule the surgery for you know a couple of days from now, a week from now. So he looks at his watch and send, says, when was the last time you ate? So he basically like, I was like on the flight here. So he's like, basically, all right, like take your clothes off and fucking meet, meet me in the operating room. <laughs> <laughs> so it was wild. So in Russia, so they don't, you know how if you had surgery over here, you get like the morphine drip when you're like in the recovery room, you hit the button. So they don't do that over there. They have like, you know, it was like a heroin problems and, and they don't, um, so the only like opiates that have to be administered by either a doctor or a nurse, but there's, there was no like intercom or anything. So every time I needed more drugs, I had to yell down the hallway <laughs> in Russian, like the word for pain in Russian is balit. So I'd be, I'd just be, I'd roll over like all fucked up. I'm like, balit. <laughs> <laughs> and some like 19 year old chick, like beautiful girl comes like giggling down the hallway with her fucking with needle, needle like this. Oh, and she just kept switching ass cheeks. She put it in. So oh. by the time, so then I'm leaving and I'm like, can I get something like some pills for the flight home or something? He's like, oh, you can't fly for a week. I'm like, doc, I'm going to the fucking airport right now. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. He's like, I can't really give you any pills. So I was like, and so the guy says, He's like, do you drink? I was like, yeah, I drink. He's like, you should drink <laughs> on the plane. Like that was the only only thing I was gonna do for the oh. for the pain. But so I anyway, it turned out. Turned I came home and saw the saw the Bruins doctor team. You know the doctors at Mass General, and he. It turns out the guy did a great job. So, um, you know, it seemed seemed well, more adventurous than than it was. But the team. But then, so you're not supposed to be able to get you know get fired when you're hurt and all that stuff. But then I. But the the import. What's interesting is like. The import rule is if somebody's hurt, you still take up a spot. So if you're hurt, you're useless to them. So they want to sign somebody to replace you. So they're trying so they're trying to get rid of me. So essentially they bought me out while I was hurt. You didn't play any more games after that? 
I thought you like went back and they had you in the lineup like the first day. <clears throat> well, they made me they made me fly back and then I still said I wasn't ready. So they told me I'd go home for three weeks because that's when I was non weight bearing, like couldn't do anything. So then as soon as the doctor said I'd be okay to start, you know, doing anything, they wanted me back. And then they kept trying to force me to play. And by that point, it wasn't, you know, I was, I was still in a ton of pain. Um, and I just, I refused to play. So they basically came to a head and they said, get the fuck out of here. So you look back over your career, obviously, you know, you know, Ottawa, Boston, and then you go over and you play in Russia, you play in Lugano and then Sweden. What for you, like what was your best year of hockey? Like like that you had fun playing, you you like yeah, it was all going on playing. Yeah, my my so my first year in Sweden, so really the the year that Sapes and I played together and I got bought out in Nizhny Kamsk, um I ended up in Sweden in Vekwa and um just Is that how you say that? Vekwa? Yeah, it looks like Vax Va- Vax I'm Joe. I'm saying Vax all Vax Yeah, Vax Joe. Joe. Yeah, yeah, they say yeah. Vekwa. Um, and I think, um, it was just an awesome fit. Like they were missing a couple of pieces. I showed up and, um, Jeff Tambellini came at the same time. I think they showed up the same week. He was coming from Switzerland. Um, already really, really good team. I couldn't believe how good the hockey in Sweden was. It was um, the best for me. Yeah. That was the hardest league. Yeah. It was yeah. hard to, as an import. E- easily. To score. That's the highest level. I think I've played like outside of the NHL. I think that's the best all around hockey. Um, and we end up, I think, I, you know, I played the last 20 games of regular season um, and I was playing for my life at that point. I mean, I had a couple bad years, basically with injuries and not really producing. I didn't have much to show for the two prior years. So I knew that it was kind of a, a crossroads of whether I was going to keep making decent money or not. Um, so I was playing for a job on a friendly contract and uh, just had a blast. Got treated unbelievably well, like the complete opposite, like so professional um everything and so the swedes are awesome people right yeah i mean yeah welcoming like um yeah. obviously the culture is a little a little more it's still very different but a little more like north america and um we end up winning the championship so and i had never won shit since like peewees so that was um that was you know probably probably my best most fun fun year i mean you know when there's nothing like winning so you know we won a championship and it's a huge deal over there. I mean, that's their yeah. professional league. There's, I mean, it's, it's the support's unbelievable. The whole city How's shut the... down. We partied for four days. It was like parades, and they flew us to Barcelona as a team to, par- to keep partying. Um, this was the same I, year? Like, you were like three months prior to all yeah, this? I went you from, were like, like yelling belief or whatever? Mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing that good to keep, <laughs> yeah, I mean, other, you know, I guess, be, I guess meeting meeting you, being still buddies, is like the only thing that came out of Nizhny Camps. <laughs> Besides, I guess I guess I'm in a fucking dump truck full of rubles, but yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> Go ahead, Nux. Yeah, just uh, it, Sweden, yeah, and and that whole the whole deal there, like uh, like you go from getting paid um, in rubles and everything in in Russia, and then you you, you get to Sweden. Huh? How did they pay? They pay you by check? Was it like normal? Fuck yeah, it was. It was. Like, it was normal. In it the was, pay scale yeah. compared yeah. to Russia, yeah. where were you there? So, so the first year was pretty friendly. I don't know what I. I didn't really care. I just needed to prove myself. Um, I think they paid me forty thousand euros um, to end the season, and then you know, but their tax rate's very high, so that's net. So you're you're seeing all that money and and they put you up and so you know, so that you have no living expenses really, you know, other than food and gas. But um and then I re signed a two year deal with them the following year. And the compensation was not that far off when you consider everything because my you know, I think the net contract was hundred and sixty five thousand euros a year. But that's net. So I mean what do you have to and then and they they paid for my house. I had a four bedroom house that I actually owned, but they paid the mortgage. They put it in my name. My kids were in school there. We had, you know, it was a great place for a family. Um, we had two cars. My wife had a car supplied by the team. Like we had no utility. We had no bills whatsoever. So if I made 165,000 euros a year, call it, that was 180 grand. I mean, we were coming home with 160 and living yeah, well. Yeah, money. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when you look at the, you know, all things considered, 
you know, you still get, can get paid very well over there in Sweden. What was but the, that was, I think that's, I was the most impressed by that league, uh, generally. Yeah. They were just, like even yeah. the best, like the best team, like you can lose to the worst team. Like if you're off, that's the difference between like the KHL, like, you know, the four or five best teams are probably, you know, the, oh, the best, like the best the, teams in yeah. Europe. There's no salary like, cap, right? Like in KHL, yeah, it's like, well, it's like, well, like St. Chocolate. Petersburg's yeah. never going to lose to like, uh, Neftahim, uh, no, um, um, like Vladivostok or something. No, no, that, yeah, I, who's no. the worst team? What's no, the so, fucking, so who's the two? Uh, Metal or no, uh, no, Nova Kuznets, yeah, whatever. It's, there's teams, Haberoffs, don't, yeah, they're just on their best, they're just never gonna beat the best teams like CSK. Or, Nux, these teams or, too, he's talking about like Haber, they like they're like nine hour flights, yeah. you're flying yeah, nine like, hours to play a Tuesday uh, game, yeah, just to get slaughtered. Like nine <laughs> so did you put Josh? Did you play with uh, Markov? You said, uh, yeah, I played with. How was he as a teammate? I, now I'll just tell you. I had a yeah. little story. Like w- one year here, we went in a bunch of the alumni, some of the older players, Le- Lafleur, uh, Lambert, Mario, Trump, a bunch of us went in, and you meet the young guys. We did this one year. We're in the back locker room of the Canadians, the lounge area, and I went to take a leak, and. And Markov is in the pisser next to me. And so I'm going to be friendly. Like I I say hi to everybody. I'm not, you know, I ain't kissing no one's fucking ass. But so I just say, hey, hey, Andre, he stood there and he stared at the wall. He didn't say a fucking word. Didn't say hello. Didn't acknowledge me. I almost wanted to take his fucking head and smash it through the fucking tiles. Right. I Honestly, it pissed me off. Then I said, you know what? Fuck it. I didn't want to start no shit in a lot. You know, here they are having the alumni. I'm going to beat up fucking mock off. But I just <laughs> found them to be fucking rude. And I don't know. He, I don't know. Yeah, he was um, he was very, very quiet. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about like Danny so Markov? No. No, I'm, no, no. no complete Andre. opposite. No, Andre Markov. Andre. Like, doesn't, barely speaks. Uh, kind of got to him a little bit. Like, dry sense. The only time he'd ever talk to me was, like, he, he'd take the pen in the power play meeting. Like, the coach would hold the meeting and be like, this is what we're <laughs> yeah. doing. And like would be walking out onto the ice, like getting introduced with starting lineup. He's like, "Hey, uh, we're not doing that." <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's like basically like, oh. "I'm gonna go back and get the puck and uh, just get open," <laughs> you know, oh. on the PP breakout. Um, but he was, yeah, he was quiet. Knuckles, like he's, yeah. um, I mean, really, really quiet. I couldn't believe he was living. Yeah, in the I've team thought, dorm. I, that's how I thought he was, but then. But, Quiet on the uh, being maybe a little weird. I don't yeah, know. I mean, yeah, he wasn't. I mean, I mean, I because we would have like a forty minute bus ride to the airport, and I just would always sit next to him, not just because that's I don't know that was the open seat when I got there, and um, he would like I don't know it was thought you like he would you're right he'd stare out the window did like, he yeah, like smile <laughs> can acknowledge no never. doesn't no emotion yeah. nothing nothing never fucking... at all no he would honestly he'd only talk like. During a game, he'd like get a little worked up about shit and like come try to like, you know, let's do this, let's try that. So but. Stape said we might have met before, Josh. Where we met, I don't. I'm trying to recall. I, I mean, was I wanted to golf tournament. It was like a Bruins alumni thing. Um, maybe but it was. I'm, I'm talking years ago. Like I was, young, okay. I was like I was like a kid. I was like maybe a okay. couple oh, years pro. When I said I, I well, I'm talking like, like, yeah, like I, I was like, oh okay. Well, no, well. I'm talking like maybe 15 years ago. You got his autograph, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah um stapes yeah no uh yeah andre was what was danny markoff like <laughs> what did, did, did what the, <laughs> his handbag he's the, what did he's he the carry? biggest oh. cartoon character of all time he um it's so he's, have you ever heard i don't know if he did this in the nhl it's crazy he in between every period of every game he would put a chair in the shower of the locker room and just rip butts. Just he'd smoke cigarettes. The coach would come in and talk and he'd just he'd still be smoking cigarettes. But like this was I imagine he had to do it in the NHL too. He constantly smoked. Like he carried around like a man purse with his like the one I was next to him at the airport one day. He's he's like ordering a cappuccino and he puts his like Louis Vuitton purse up on the up on the thing at like the private terminal of the airport. And I'm like, I'm like, Danny, what the fuck's in there? Like, <laughs> he's like, he like, he's like, what? He opens it up. He's like, my, uh, he's like, my money, uh, my, my cigarettes, uh, my gun and, um, uh, mayonnaise. <laughs> 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 I'm like, what? So 
I'm like, everything's pretty self-explanatory other than he's about to bring his gun on a fucking plane. And uh, just came to learn that he put, he never put a morsel of food in his mouth without putting mayonnaise on it. So he just carried his own jar around because it's not always easy to find in Russia. But uh, I saw him eating an onion a, one time. Man. Like it was a fucking yeah. apple. He was just, like, just chewing this onion. Wild man. Yeah, he's... He would, he was like, he was a riot. He was very good to me, very welcoming, very social. Like he'd start screaming like he was pissed, but he, he just did it so often that like you knew it was just like talking to him. It was like you just respond in a completely normal, calm voice. But um, he said that he never, basically never saw the inside of a gym in the off season. Like never one time touched a weight in an off season. Um, yeah, but he, he was just so like he, was, he played so, like 600 games, right? Yeah, and he would hammer guys like open ice hit. Like he was like an artist at open ice hits. Like he was like he was older by the time I played with him, and he would still. And that's unusual in the KHL. Like guys had. I had him in as like, assistant he would look coach. To fucking clock people, and it's funny for somebody who never worked out. He's like lank. He's like bony and like no muscle definition, and smokes two packs a day. And he's just so fucking competitive that it didn't matter. Like he didn't even have to be in great shit. It just didn't matter. He was so competitive. Like he'd he he'd say that he used to say he'd bite your fucking ankles off to get the puck back. So, uh he was he was cool though. Definitely a memorable character. Hey, what Spikes was the new leaves. guy yeah. party? I was was that you I was talking to in Sweden? Yeah. Didn't you get Yeah, what's the new guy party? Yeah. Oh, when they set my ass on fire? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was oh telling Nux, God. it doesn't matter if you play a thousand games, one game, whatever. You're yeah, always no, considered so a new Instead guy. of a rookie party, yeah. if it's your first year on the team, you get like rookie treatment for a day, basically. You could have six championships and be going, you know. Chris Chell, like, Chris, yeah, you guys would be like, you yeah. would be, a, yeah, yeah. You would have to do yeah. this. Yeah, like if it was your last year in the league, you know, and you and you went to Detroit, you'd, you'd be treated like a rookie for a day. So... What was unique, it happened to me in Sweden, and I didn't understand the concept really, but we, we did it in Finland before the season started because it's like they know you're going to act like assholes, so it's better to not do it in, at home. Um, we went to Helsinki for like team a couple exhibition games and like team building. and um, So I'm like being a good sport about it. We have practice in the morning. What was funny though for me was I was at the time I was 30, I had four kids, <laughs> and had just won a championship for that team. <laughs> And they're treating and you like, like a rookie. <laughs> and there's some like 18 year old kid with like a lighter and shot glasses, like in the <laughs> locker room, like he's gonna fucking set me on fire. And I'm like, what the fuck is about? Does this kid think is about to happen right now? So we practice and we fucking. So there's like beers in the locker room after practice at like 11 in the morning. And everybody just starts drinking, and you know they do some like hazing shit at the rink. And we're in Finland. I don't know where they came up with this. Somebody must have done it before, but. One of them was basically like all the new guys. You're like totally naked. You have to stick a piece of toilet paper up your ass. And they stand behind you and light it on fire. And there's three <laughs> three shots of tequila in front of you. And you you have you're the the only person that can save you is yourself once they set it on fire. Once they like you gotta the blast those three yeah, shots. Yeah, so you gotta get the three shots down before you can rip the toilet paper out of your ass. Otherwise, oh. I don't know, whatever. Some You're fucking your concert, ass. Concert call. Yeah. So there was supposed to be like one of the older guys, older veteran, whatever, on the team guy standing there with a water bottle, like like safety guard, like fire Put extinguisher type guy. <laughs> yeah. So my guy froze. This is at like noon on a Tuesday. <laughs> and for some reason, I don't know if there was like lighter fluid on the toilet paper or what, but it just like went up. Like <laughs> you lit it. I was like, didn't even have the first glass to my mouth. And I'm, oh. I'm like on fire. But I'm trying to be, I'd already had a couple of beers, so I'm trying to be like tough about it. And I, so I, I get the three shots down and I pull, so I like <laughs> ride my ass. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I start, I'm like, I saw complete red. I'm like trying to kill the kid. I'm like the kid with the, with the lighter. And it, now we're all completely <laughs> naked. There's like other rookies that are also <laughs> naked trying to like, <laughs> like fucking calm me down. And then I'm looking at the kid oh. that was that had the water bottle. I'm like, where the fuck were you? <laughs> <laughs> are you? And then I'm thinking, so then the GM's like all upset that like something happened. And I'm like, I'm like, didn't we? I was like, I just, I, I had a fucking trophy over my head at a parade like fucking six months ago. <laughs> like not this, some 18 year old kid set me on fire in Finland. Like what, what the fuck um, just happened? <laughs> What about you two together when you played together? You get any good like stories from your time when you were together, the two years? Or? I just love yeah. it. Was uh, I gotta plug give my, us some dirt on I gotta, stakes, I gotta plug Josh. my computer in. Well, the funny thing, <laughs> like 
Stapes is, has like a gift of being like the most negative person <laughs> alive mm-hmm, and it mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. affecting his play. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to, I got to plug my computer in, sorry. I wouldn't and, call uh, it negative, you know? Jesus. Negative? What are you, are you serious? Um, so like, just let me plug this in one second. Yeah, I was pretty negative. This was towards the end though, Knox. Don't, you know. Yeah. You were negative, net, ne- <laughs> never negative. At the beginning. I was never negative in Niftahemic. Can yeah, you say positive. that? That's like a tongue twister. <laughs> no, never I was negative. pretty negative, you know, but I mean, like, fuck, who wasn't? If you weren't negative, dude, like, something was wrong with you. That's, I just, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I remember Pavelski came over for like three months and everything was great. I'm like, dude, bitch about, you got to bitch about something. Yeah. Like, I need to hear it's, it. Well, you part know. of being in Russia is like with the North America, like, you bond over like bitching about how wild it is or how fucked up it is. But I remember staying. <laughs> tapes i tell the story <laughs> right when you got there and you were like a huge signing for us because it was like i would say i mean it's like at best a middle of the road organization like where we were together like making the playoffs is like a success um and we signed stapes and our coach was from finland and had coached stapes before so i'm pumped to like have another we had mutual friends so i knew he was a good shit so I, we hadn't actually met but i was pumped to have another american guy coming and uh so we even have, if like, he was from out west right yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the the stories i had heard from him though i thought I figured, josh thinks i came from the fucking the I, island i Philippines thought you were from so. thailand <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. you're like oh the masseuse yeah. is here i'm like no dude i'm fucking first line center Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking your i'm taking your spot pal i'm like i'm like weren't you the guy collecting money at the rub and tug <laughs> <laughs> I um, am now. I am now. <laughs> um, so we, we we do like a it's like a team building cookout. It's in the middle of the day, and it was on like a. I think they thought it was like a lake setting with like outdoor picnic tables, or under like a gazebo. Dude, are you talking everybody's, about the hat? Everybody's drinking. You remember, dude? I was. Yeah, I forgot kid, about kid. this. I have it. You forgot about it. You you have you just have it in your pocket, dude. This kid, it says cocaine and caviar. I know, this kid I fucking it. wore oh, it every yeah. day at training camp. Anyways, keep going. I remember that. I ended up taking it from him, but it, that was a yeah. Keep going. Well, this, I was just gonna tell about you being that you've been there for like two days, and we're supposed to be having like a fun day off. We're all, <laughs> we're all drinking, and I I look over and like the Russian kids, they have they when they get drinking, they're very like ritualistic about it, and they like hug, and everybody has to make a speech. It's like every guy on the team made like a wedding toast about the season coming up and about how great we were gonna be. And I'm thinking like, guys, like we got like a thirty percent chance of making the playoffs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we're not gonna beat fucking Red Army. Like fucking sit down. I don't need another speech. Let the captain say something and let's <laughs> yeah. fucking eat. Please. Like every guy, so, like the guy, like yeah. the guy stands up next with the cocaine caviar at. He's like yeah. saying stuff yeah. like, and we got to like, be fucking, well, fucking still like 35 <laughs> we got to be hard to play like, against. You know, it's like, dude, take <laughs> well, the hat off. It's well, like, training holy camp's shit. two months long and there's still like 35 guys there. I'm like, all these guys aren't going to be on the team. I'm like, why is the kid with the cocaine hat <laughs> fucking making a speech? There's no way this kid's playing one game for us this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's so like 12. So halfway oh, through the half, it's still broad daylight. Halfway through the speeches, I look over. Stapes is like sitting on like this like old little wooden bridge next to a homeless guy, <laughs> like kicking his like dangling his legs <laughs> over the pond, and he's like he's he's got a fishing rod. Like he, he like basically went over and gave the guy like ten thousand rubles to borrow his fucking fishing rod, so he just didn't have to listen to the fucking speeches anymore. I was done with it. I was like, dude, I can't. Yeah, he's like, I can't. Oh, listen. when the cone cake caviar got kid stood up, I was like, I can't do this, man. So he, he he finally comes back. So the coach comes up to me and he's like, Hey, he's like, Henny, you seen Stapes? I'm like, Yeah, he's fishing over there. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking so Stapes comes walking back. Oh. Finally, he's like waving him over. I, see, I look over. The coach has got his arm around him. Stapes looks like he's almost in tears. He's like, Coach Car. He's like, Car. I, th- I think I've made a horrible mistake coming here. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yes, was that first. You know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't even game. played a game. I went to a picnic. It was my first day, and I fucking was pissed. <laughs> he's like, no. I, I shouldn't. I, I think I'm a mistake. No, here. because Nux always like my. You were making a million bucks. Yeah, what was it though? We've talked about that. Like how we both. It was just hard. I remember I'd spend. And the thing is, is like it wasn't. It was probably more me just bitching. You know when I think about Russia, like I'm actually glad I went there, but I know for me every summer, you know, you'd have like whatever 90 days, like every day I thought about leaving. 
And so like, you just would like, I remember one time I was driving to the airport and my wife just looks over. She's like, are you crying? I'm like bawling as I'm driving. <laughs> and I realized, yeah. you know, I just spent the last 90 days waiting for this day and it's here. And I just was like, you know, it was, you know, but it's, it's tough. It's, I mean, it's, especially when you, you, you know, it's, it's difficult to bring a family over there. if not impossible, depending yeah. on where you were, where I, where I was. I mean, I wasn't good enough to play on the, you know, on the top teams, um, so the cities I was no, in yeah, was I mean, not it's... somewhere we would have been comfortable with a family. Remember our apartment? And, uh... We had to like, oh, yeah. we couldn't even like the Remember water. That, the elevator broke? Yeah, the, the water. The elevator would only work like half the time. And we lived on the 13th floor. And we, there was like a little, like in the parking lot, there was like a little like hut with like a, like a cage on a window where they sold like beer and Doritos. <laughs> Yeah, I and we'd like look at each other when the elevator was broken. Like, whose turn is it to go get the Heinekens and fucking chips tonight? <laughs> like, we were, we were our, our water get was up. brown the whole time. Stapes, Stapes gets up. I don't know if he ever sleeps, but he would get up at like fucking I don't know what time. But every I, he, he'd have an omelet for me every day. I woke up with like like with fucking like pepperoni in it because there was no ham over there, so we'd have like fucking. <laughs> whatever man yeah, like, like a, a week old onion our driver a, too would just be like he one. would just our driver knocks would just like not like he would we'd get in the car and he would just like not start it and just be like gas prices went up you owe me that like we'd have to he'd just charge <laughs> oh, yeah. us more remember we were, he just he just pouted like a sad dog for like a week and he'd like <laughs> sit at red lights and turn the engine off and we pulled up to a red light i'm like what the fuck's going on so i'm trying to like think of every russian word i'm like money like you need money he's like yes i need more money <laughs> Fuck like, like right now, but yeah, we. Or had you, a, you, if you took a taxi there and you tried, like you didn't have like the perfect, like the right amount, the exact amount, like say there was ten rubles and you gave them like a twenty, like all of a sudden they had no change, like you were, yeah, no, like, no, like no, they were no, looking, like, they were just looking and passed like their passport, like I have no change, it's like motherfucker, you've been driving this thing all day, I know you have. Oh man, it was. Uh, the first time I went over there, we went over, we played with the uh, Canadians alumni. Fatisov had us over because he was friends with Rishi. And we went over and played a bunch of games. And um, Fatisov at the time was the minister of sport. So he's building all these new rinks around Russia. And we will go and play them, play in those buildings. Anyway, um, we, um, we ended up talking. And it was crazy. Like, we went to dinner one night. Putin was supposed to come. Because Fatisov, he stumped for Putin when he first ran, right? When he, it made it look like he was running anyway at the time. And Fatisov and him were really tight. But we went to dinner and and we're all sitting there, we're waiting. And his spokesman, you ever see the guy who comes on now and lies for him? Dmitry Peskov, his name is. Well, Dmitry came and had dinner with us and he sat down. And I'm telling you, the guy was such a hockey historian, not only about Russia, Mother Russia. He just knew every fucking player, everything. But he gave us the whole rundown on the Fabulous Five, where they're from, fucking how they – it, it was incredible, um, it, you know, to sit there and listen to that when you're in another, another country like we were, for, especially for the first time. And I, like I said, I still had that culture shock, but it took me a couple days to get acclimated. But – um you know, they, they, they treat us well over there. It's because we were with, with Fatisov, obviously. But we, this is, you know, still, you know, the freedom is still pretty new to them. But Fatisov, he had a driver with him, right? He would come up to the hotel. We were staying right in Red Square. It was an older hotel, and it was beautiful. It had all red, big curtains, fucking gorgeous, gold leaf, everything. And it was an older place. And, um he pull up in the front in the big old Mercedes and he have his bodyguard with him. Right. And the fucking guy's packing. He had, a, he had a, a saw, small submachine gun, one of them little teeny ones in a, in a like holster on the fucking hump of the car. And then they had that, the little blue light they put on. Right. And you know, I'm there. What's the deal with the blue light? Is that all politicians? He said, for the most part, but he said some people can get them, but they, they cost like 250 grand. You get it. You put that red light on. Everybody got to get the fuck out of the way at the time. But this was like 2000. It was 2002, 2003. Yeah. So, it, you know, I think it was just crazy. No, yeah, like, it's seeing, just crazy. You know, and the, then, hockey, the whole different. But the hockey deal. players, I mean, even the way we were treated was really good. So much better. 
Yeah. Than, well, no, and that's anybody what anybody else could expect to be treated. And I mean, that's they, the thing is like that's hockey in very yeah, high regard. I probably was uh, yeah. more just you know I was just an American fucking viewing it my way, and I was in a different yeah. country. I you mean, know, they were. You know, in their but, own way, they treated us as well as you yes. can, anybody can possibly get treated over there. I mean, if you and it's just two classes. It's like haves and haves not. So the hockey players have money, so you're part of that class automatically. So you get a certain amount of respect. But um, and then I forgot about know, that. Fishing I, what I will story. say about like coming from like the obviously the old Red Army team and stuff, and like the the legacy of that. Yeah. You see in the Russian kids, and I, I'll give them credit, and I was a little bit surprised by this from the guys I had played with over here. Um, you know, the Russians I played with before going to Russia, they are like, and I mean this as a compliment, but they're like cockroaches in the sense that like you can't, like they don't complain, they just keep nope. going. Like yeah, you could have like an unbelievable resume, some of those guys making a couple million bucks and they're, you know, the coach, like you could be on like your third coach of the year because the team's, you know, playing like shit. And if they say run 20 miles through the woods right now, they just fucking get up and do it and don't say a word. Like they do not remember that. Complain. We had a, what's that? Uh, you have creaking off. Yeah. We had to run. I that just, was probably the last night we had time we hung out together was running 10 kilometers and fucking six o'clock at night. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I, but the, the, <laughs> you should tell that story, but the Russian, the Russian guys, they, to their credit, I guess they're so accustomed to that. And I think playing hockey and making money is so much better. Than whatever like I don't think like that, for them like in life, that anxiety and depression what, yeah. doesn't yeah. exist yeah. in Russia. Yeah. Like depression, no, and anxiety, like, kind of like robots. Yeah, it's just like you can't, you can't. They're so accepting. I, mean, I guess they're used to it. They grew up with it. But like the things that seem fucked up to us just don't even phase them at all. It's like at some point, you know, it's like you. All right, we have a game tomorrow. We're, we've been on the ice for two and a half hours in practice. Like, what the fuck are we doing? And they're just like, what? What do you mean? Like, yeah. just keep going yeah. until you until you say it's over, and nobody will say a fucking word. It's wild. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's got a that whole society there. When you look at when I got, first got there, I'm like, first of all, no one like gray would look like red. Fuck, everyone wore black. Fucking no, no, nobody had a color on, and like it was just so they're so hard that hard people. And you grew up in that society, and especially when it's communism, right? Everybody has to lie, right? You want to fucking try and do something. You're always, uh, you know, under someone's fucking watchful eye. So you're always sneaking around lying and fucking, I don't know. It's just a hot, yeah, they, um, hot people. No, hot like, people. like Henny, like you said, though, like you, you, you let someone go in traffic. Like you're not, now you're going to have to fucking, it's like the game Frogger. Like you got to fucking just jump out there. Like no one's going to do that in return. And I think. You know what you're saying? It's just too, a race to the front of the line. Well, it's just like, like no one like, cares about anybody. Bully. Nobody cares yeah. about anybody. It's like they don't – and that, there's no codependency. They don't care. And that maybe that's what it is too. It's like they don't have that ex- – they don't they're, – they're not wasting like uh, energy or, or emotion on anybody. But <clears throat> that's why they have like no emotion. It's just like they just go through it. Yeah. And nobody not, and, and I, For me, over time, I was like eventually you become that. And I thought it was awesome. Like you fit right. Oh, in. I'd just be like fucking elbowing on like a seventy year old <laughs> Russian lady to get a bag of chips. You know, you like and I didn't I care. Remember, what you, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Seriously? Like you wore sweatpants for twenty seven days straight. Like you just didn't care. And when, it was you know. When uh, the first time um uh my wife came to visit, she flew over with um two of the other North American wives that kind of coordinated when they were gonna come so you know they wouldn't be alone if we had to go on the road or anything. And um we picked them up at the airport. And it was like, she didn't recognize me because I'm just like, I'm usually like passive and polite and smiling and like, just kind of like, you know, <laughs> just fucking don't care. And uh, like, you didn't even speak you know, English. I'm like fucking pushing people. I'm like grabbing <laughs> suit. I'm like yelling at someone to carry my bags. And it, <laughs> she's like, who are you? I'm like, I was man, like, if you want to get to the hotel yeah. sometime in the next five hours, just fucking <laughs> grab my belt and fucking follow me. Um, <laughs> Oh it, man. It, it does. It rubs off on you. Yeah. And then but you it's so relieving when you get home. I remember getting home and like someone just kind of like, you know, like politely like letting you walk into the bathroom first or something at the airport when you land, you're like, oh God. Like it's like, yeah, it's like you're like have like trauma. I would have I would have friends that would be like, Man, you okay? Like you're just different. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking different. I was just in nine months in a place that has like no manners. You know. Don't pay attention to that man behind the curtain. That just fucking come out. Oh come God, out yeah, Jesus. Who? What's up, Barry? What, what kind of dumb question you have for him? I just have, <laughs> I just have two dumb questions. All right. 
if you could change anything in your career, what would it be? Uh, I would say such a, I guess maybe a cliche, but um, I, I actually wouldn't change anything. Um, I had so many wild experiences that, I mean, obviously I wish I played in the NHL for 15 years. Um, so many like cool, I guess, formative experience and like, you know, learned, learned so much and hockey was still very, very good to me. So I'm really grateful for, for everything that happened. Um, you know, I, I'm not a big regret guy. So, I mean, in terms of how I approach the game, I would have liked to have been more like the guys that just show up as rookies and they're like, get the fuck out of my way. I belong here. You would have had um, more water. Kind of like I would stand off to the side and just like smile and let people go. I, like I do the same thing. I did the same thing in like my first three NHL training. Camps, but, you know, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. Xavier's like, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, like, so, sorry, Mr. Albertson. I didn't mean to take that puck from you. Like, Can I buy you lunch? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, obviously that's not. Um, so I was a little too wide eyed for too long, um, I would say, and didn't have that almost ignorant confidence that I think is actually uh, uh, such an asset. Um, for young guys, um, you know, if, if, if obviously you don't, you don't want to come across as, as arrogant, but I, I wish that I had had the ability to kind of step in and, and act like I belong more. more well, that's, so. awesome like, you, you, it, it's awesome. You, you say that because it's not easy to be honest about that, right? It's so good to hear you say that. I, I'm impressed because it's not easy to, when you look back at that and to say that, because I, listen, my first year pro, like, I might be a different animal, but we had a kid, Richie Costello. He played at Merrimack, right? He was drafted by the Habs. And we went to Hal We got sent to the American League, Halifax. And Bert Templeton was a coach, and he was a notorious coach in junior. He had goon teams. He fucking hated Americans, hated college kids. And I had Timmy Burke with me. He was the assistant GM at San Jose. He was my roommate. He drafted me. He's Yeah, Berkey. So Berkey says... He, he loves fucking Boston kid, but he, he said, listen, here's the deal. Don't be first in line. Get the fucking, just watch. Don't be first to go in the drills. He, thank God he was there. So fucking there's Richie Costello first in line. Right. And he goes, he fucks the drill up. Bert blows the whistle. He goes, fuck Costello, you fucking idiot. I thought you fucking college kids were supposed to be smart. And fucking Richie, he was kind of, you know, he wasn't overly aggressive kid, but fuck, I felt so bad when he fucking melt. He went and got in the end. He was gone the next fucking day. <laughs> See you later, Rich. And I, I felt so bad for him, but that was my introduction to fucking hockey up here. And with Bert, the thing is then Bert, once I had a fight and I fucked someone up, then Bert was like, okay, this ain't the typical college kid, I guess, but you know, I felt so fucking Yeah, nowadays, awesome. though, these 18-year-olds. I'm year impressed olds, you said yeah, that, Yeah, but though. these 18-year-olds nowadays, God. like, run practice. They just, like, come in and, like, it's, you know. Oh, yeah, I you, know. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but I, that is good you said that because that, that's a good way to say it because that's kind of something I feel for sure for me. I was always just, you know. Well, I tell, I, I've, I've said before, like, I, it's like I was in Disneyland when I got called up. I mean, it's like, you can't, you, you know, obviously you have to believe in yourself and I believed in my ability um, physically, but I was just kind of happy to wait, wait my turn and, you know, was hoping, you know, whenever the time's right, it'll happen. And then one day you wake up and it didn't fucking happen. And you're in Russia with a fucking uh, broken leg. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yelling believe. Yeah, I I <laughs> <laughs> believe. Yeah, believe. Exactly. You got your fourth fucking needle in the ass of the day. You know, or you got some 18 year old lighting your asshole on fire. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Oh, oh so Barry, any I know you have another one, producer Barry. Very good. One more question. One last one. One last one. I love asking this question. What would be the first line of your hockey eulogy? You mean like sentence? <laughs> yes. If I was writing the first sentence of your hockey eulogy, you're most obviously a summing up your hockey career or well, feeling. I, I mean I think of having and it's something I, it, that I was embarrassed about and um because I was drafted fairly high and stuff but I, I have I have one NHL goal you guys probably saw that which is it's kind of you know it's 
funny that it has changed to like something I'm very proud of from something that was almost embarrassing having been a second round pick and I had a great junior career and, you know, drafted ahead of Hall of Famers. So it kind of made peace with having felt like a bust to realizing through like seeing my kids start to play. So a kid from Brockton with one NHL goal, like that's the sentence? Well, it's just how ridiculously rare no. it is to ever play professional anything. Nux says, you yeah, say it man. all the time, <laughs> Nux. You say Thank it all, you. No, he says, I say that all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. And I like, and with Tim, I say, guys, you make it to one fucking NHL game. It's such an accomplishment. Guys don't know. Now, listen, I'm fortunate. I, I really am. I fought my way to get there. There's no question. And I had good people around me to help me stay there. They helped me become a hockey player. I played with two fucking Hall of Famers. I mean, you know, and and it wasn't like, you know, they weren't expecting a whole lot out of me, but they got a fucking whole lot out of me. But I say that about everybody. One fucking game in the NHL, I don't care. It's such an accomplishment, and you can never take that away from a guy. When you look at the number of people who get yeah, it's to like play no, no, it's like the, a professional sport. It's just that one day you're impressive. actually doing something that only like 600 people can do in the world. It's pretty fucking incredible. Whatever the math is, I'm yeah, my numbers are off. I'm Irish. Yeah, it's just I guess you know gaining perspective on it, and and it's it's difficult to you know the mental side of the game. I think there's more. There's Barry's more, like um, that's not a big deal. Fucking well, yeah. So. It, Barry, to answer your question, it would have some, something to do with having having had one goal. Um, you know, like that was, yeah, you know, I guess I, I made it, I guess, you know. Cause it, I made yeah, it. It's a fucking big goal. I made it. There it is. I made it. it. it yeah, it ends for everybody. Um, you know, at some point, you know, you like Knuckles, at some point you played a lot more than we did. At some point you played your last game and probably would have liked to play another one, you know. <laughs> it's like somebody told you it was, you know. Um, so uh, I think that was you know, something to do with, I guess, my, my perspective changed on um, kind of it being a badge of honor now as opposed to something that, you know, seeing myself as a, as a bust, even though I, I tried. That's, what, that's the tough part to reconcile is when I, I really did work my balls off. I mean, we all, we all ah. did, but it's like... You didn't cheat yourself, yeah. and, and that's <laughs> yeah. the bottom line. When you, yeah. you know, really, in the end, you didn't cheat yourself. You gave your best. And l- listen, I hear you when you talk about where you were drafted, right? And you expect them more. Now, here's one for you. You know Terry Ryan, right? All right? Uh, drafted by the Habs in the first round. I mean, he wrote, and, and it's weird. Like, I'm going to have Terry on. And I met him. I remember I met him. I was up here. I met him in the bar um, here in Montreal. He came up to me. He said, Knuckles, I can love you. I always watch you. He's fucking crazy as a bed bug, Terry. Like, he was so happy and excited. But... Then I saw him, he wrote a book, Tales of a First Round Nothing. My Life as an NHL Footnote. Like, talk about shitting on yourself. Like, I've, I I'm there, I, I felt bad. And I'm going to have him on. I'm going to ask him because I, I always felt like I like the kid. He's, he, 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 you know, Quirky. he, he I've got seen there. Him on some of those. He fucking yeah. got there. Yeah. And and he writes this book about just shitting all. It seemed like he just shit all over himself. I'm there. Come on. But yeah, yeah, I I say that you play one game, fuck, God bless you. You yeah, know, it's not uh, not an easy thing to do, and, and you see how many people you, you lose the perspective along the way because you know you're always one of the best at every level, right? Until you get to that the highest level, and you're like, fuck, everybody's good. Um, yeah, if so someone said I sucked, yeah. I would just be like, we're in the same league. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey man, we're in the same and league. I'd, I'd be like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, well, I would say I know, but in my head, I'd no. be like, fuck. We're in the same Dave, league. But, oh, uh, do you remember? Uh, did you? Were <laughs> you not re- refusing to take a, a to oh, go on a shootout? I, I do remember this. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> lack Talk of about confidence Mr. Negative. For, a mo- for a moment, Mr. Negative. What it did happen? Sta- Tell from, Stapleton. Yeah, with, like we went to a shootout, we and the shootout coach. Out I kept refusing like, to go. <laughs> yeah, the coach is like Stapleton. You'd be like, no. I'd, I'd be like, no. Stapleton. I was just like, <laughs> I'm not going. You're like. And I'm like, me oh, and no, Yager, both. me and Yager, are the only yeah. two that ever done that. <laughs> but it got to a point though, Barry, where I had to go. Like I went, I ended up going, I scored. No, that's the best. No, you came down. I never forget the goal. You like came down the left side, like took like a hard step to your right and went low glove. It was like a beautiful goal scorer's goal. And you have this like dickhead, like look on your face. Like you were mad because now the coach would be happy. Fuck, I was the negative like, guy. Huh? 
Yeah. Oh. Was, uh, no, well, was, I'm gonna call my therapist after this. <laughs> <laughs> we can get we we can forget about mom for a while. Are you living in Rhode Island, uh, yeah, Josh? Yeah, or, I'm yeah? in uh, North Kingstown, Rhode Island, like 20 minutes south of uh, south of Providence. Um, uh, kids are four four great kids down here. Um, you know, on school, I got twin eight year old boys that are playing. Um, so back back in the rink, uh, but life life's good. Good stuff. Hey, listen, thanks um, for taking the time today. Appreciate you've been generous with uh, your time, and I wish you nothing but the best moving forward. And for all our listeners out there, if you enjoyed this episode, please like us, follow us, or subscribe. It does not cost a thing to subscribe. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me.